Hello, Math 3. I wanted to jump in here today and give my own explanation for comparing functions. I'm going to talk about a problem that I pulled from Khan Academy, so you're welcome to go there and listen to Sal Khan explain it, but sometimes it helps to have someone explain it in their own way. It's good to hear different ways of understanding the same thing. It means that more students will get the hang of it. We're talking about comparing functions. So every line can be described by a linear function. Every linear function creates a line, and every linear function and every line can be described by a table. Right, that compares the x and y values. If I was going to describe those three things, I might talk about them in terms of a triangle. All right, so when we talk about, I'm going to make my triangle a little bit better here. There we go. There's a connection between functions, lines, and tables. So when we look at a problem, we're going to be paying attention to anything that might fit into an x and y table. Because anytime we can generate an x and y table, we're going to be able to generate a y equals mx plus b style function, which will create some sort of line on a graph, creating or finishing up our triangle, right? All three points of our triangle here. We'll let go of some of those things so we have room to work. Here we go. So I'm going to give the problem a careful read and I'm going to be highlighting here, we'll highlight in blue, I'm going to be highlighting information that I think will be particularly useful for us as we try to fill up our table down here. Let's take a look. Charles and Tammy live the same distance from work. It's good that they have jobs. Not everybody has a job right now during the coronavirus closure, but we're happy for Charles and Tammy. Um, and apparently, they walk to work, and they walk to work at exactly the same time. Don't ask how we know this. It's not part of the algebra problem. They also both walk at constant speeds, which is extraordinarily unlikely for both Charles and Tammy, unless they have exactly the same shoe size. Anyways, moving on. They both walk at constant speeds, though not necessarily at... Oh, I read it wrong. They both walk at constant speeds, but not necessarily at the same speed. Okay, that's going to be important. So their speed is constant, but it might be different for Charles than it is for Tammy. Charles' distance from work is shown on the following table. All right, so after 50 seconds of walking, Charles is 830 meters away from work. After 150 seconds of walking, Charles is 690 meters away from work. This seems pretty straightforward. In fact, it looks a lot like something we could put into a table. So I'm going to click over and go to Desmos because I know how to add a table and I want to see the linear function that describes Charles's walk to work. All right, so in my x column, I'm going to have 50, 100, 150. I'll put those in. Okay. And on the y-axis, I'm describing the distance from work. Now, it's interesting that as we go out the x-axis our distance to work is going to decrease. I think that's going to create a very particular function. So 830, 760, 690. Let's put those in. And if I zoom out on my graph here, I should be able to find those points. There they are. And right away, I see that it does describe a very particular function. It's going to have 
a negative slope. I don't have an equation for this function yet. I can't describe it as an equation yet, but we'll get there. Right? Let's go back to our problem and keep reading. Okay? So, Tammy starts 830 meters away from work. Let's double check. Looks like that's the same as Charles. Good. Okay? Uh, and she walks towards work at 2 meters per second. Okay? Oh, I see. So, I'm, again, I'm reading it wrong. And honestly, this is okay because sometimes you think you understand a math problem and when you get into it, you realize you've got to read it twice. So over here, we have a bunch of possible answers. It could be this one, but not necessarily. It might be this one, but not necessarily. We're going to have to work out we're going to have to work out which of these answers is the correct one. So let's try that. We've got all sorts of possibilities, right? And if I go back to this first sentence, I'm going to find out that Charles and Tammy live the same distance away from work. I bet that's going to help us eliminate some possibilities. If they live the same distance away from work, could Tammy start at 900 meters from work? Hmm, is that possible? Well, the first data point that we have is that when Charles is 830 meters away from work, he's already been walking 50 seconds. Okay. The other way to think about this is, would the function that describes Charles' walk to work intersect the y-axis at 900, right? A value of 0 for x would have to result in a value of 900 for y. Let's put that point in. I don't have the I don't have the line yet, but it looks like a pretty good bet. I think it's fair to say that Charles when he's been walking 0 seconds is 900 meters away from work. That means that Tammy can't start 830 meters from work, and she can't start 760, and she can't start 830. So we have two possibilities left, and we've barely done any math. Okay, so let's read those and see what makes sense. Tammy started 900 meters from work and walked towards work at 7 fifths meters per second. What a lovely fraction. Tammy could have started 900 meters from work and walked towards work at 5 sevenths meters per second. What they're asking us to do is build a second function and compare that with what we know about Charles. So let's do that. We're looking for a y, an m, an x, and a b. Okay? And our b, the clue to our b, is right here, that Charles starts at 900 meters away from work. They walk the same distance, so Tammy has to start the same place. This is going to be a plus 900, okay? We won't know the y, and we won't know the x, but we will know the m, okay? So our m is either going to be the 7 fifths, or the 5 sevenths, and we might have to try both and see which function creates a line that lands on top of Charles's points. Let's add an expression and try it out. y equals 5, oops, not 5 minus, good lord, 5 sevenths x plus 900. <gasps> Oh, no, I don't think so. All right, let's add a second expression and try out the other one. Y equals 7 fifths X plus 900. No, no, that doesn't seem to be right either. These both have a positive slope, and we need something 
with a negative slope, therefore we need to add a negative sign. And the answer is y equals 7 fifths x, excuse me, y equals negative 7 fifths x plus 900. And if you want to think about that negative sign in terms of the word problem, they get closer and closer to work, or the distance from work decreases as time increases. Okay? It's an inverse relationship. So based on what we did in Desmos, the 7 fifths equation, the 7 fifths function, lines up with the dots that describe Charles's walk to work. Therefore, the correct answer, we need a different color, let's go with bright red. The correct answer is right here. Tammy started 900 meters from work and walked towards work at 7 fifths meters per second. So by comparing different information, right, different forms of the same function, we had a table for Charles, and we had enough information about Tammy to create a function. Okay? So we were able to do a table and a function and connect them together to create a line. Okay? That's why and how we would compare functions. Please make sure to watch as many other videos as you need about this. Check in, send emails, write text messages. I'm happy to video chat and walk you through the process on a specific problem, but we really want you to get to next Monday ready to feel comfortable comparing functions. Have fun. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you soon.